Great. Well, thank you, Shadi, and thanks, everybody, for coming. Uh, my name is Bill Hoffman, and I'm from the World Economic Forum. And what I'd like to share is just a few uh, insights that uh, the World Economic Forum has had in a variety of its uh, convening events on the importance of mobile commerce as a uh, point of leverage for creating a global good. Um, I think, in general, we can't underestimate the power of what the global ICT infrastructure represents at this moment in time. And so what I'd like to do is share what some of those macro inputs are and what some of the um, underlying ideas are. Just real quickly, I think one of the key points that uh, is driving a lot of the dialogue right now is the nature of change, that we are living in a complex, hyper-connected society that in many ways is a living thing. So the velocities of change, the way that power is being radically redistributed, all of the feedback loops, all of the second order impacts, the ways that simply nobody can really understand what's going on is now starting to be recognized as a fundamental recognition that we need to embrace the uncertainty. And so I think what's happening in the dialogues that we're having between the private sector, the public sector, and civil society is that people are now having the courage to recognize, I don't understand, help me, help me understand what's going on. So I think there's a very unique moment in time where there generally is a strength to collaborate and work together so that we can leverage this really important opportunity that, from my perspective, without being too dramatic, is generally transformational. I mean, if you look back through history, when uh, electricity came online, uh, when you know, other big societal transformations come along, um, we're at that point in time, and some of the decisions we make today, I think, are going to be very important for a long time to come. I think one of the lenses that I think that's also important to have a structured dialogue and to come to some type of collaborative understanding is embracing this notion of some of our large paradoxes. Uh, the fact of how can you be both open and secure? How can you leverage the innovation and the collaboration and the interoperability of a lot of the open platforms with the need to be highly secure, reliable, and trusted? And that's a challenge, and there is no right or wrong answer. Uh, likewise, looking at some of the notions around what an intellectual property asset is. How can you own and control, yet at the same time, put it into a commons, share, allow innovation to happen on top of it? How do you strike that balance? And obviously, the notion of how can we leverage the global borderless world of the digital uh, infrastructure, yet still recognize the rights and needs of sovereign nations, of local municipalities, and finally, individuals. And so, all of these inner connected paradoxes um, are starting to create a way that there is no right or wrong, that we need to start to strike a balance in the middle. And I think this is also where we start to recognize that it's going to be um, a challenge before we understand what these new mechanisms look like to how we reach consensus. But more importantly, what are some of the core principles that we want to embrace so that these new structures can work around? So the issues around anonymity, around privacy, around property rights, all of these kind of core underlying principles are from my perspective where I've seen a lot of encouragement of people starting to recognize that that is a very important set of uh, discussions to look at right now. And clearly that relates to the M commerce platform as well. From an infrastructure and technology perspective, and, and this is a buzzword, the word post ubiquity, so by no means do I mean that we have fully connected everyone. There literally are billions more that we need to connect. But I think we're at the, if you will, the end of the beginning. And we're entering the phase now where we're all starting to deal with the data tsunami and it's going to start to have a serious impact on our technology infrastructures, on our communications networks, because there's just a deluge of data. And there's a variety of different insights you can look at that. One of the things that um, I've personally heard and I've connected with is just from a connectivity perspective, um, by 2020, in, in eight more years, the wireless demand is going to grow by a thousand-fold. And so that the data, the insights, the numbers that we're all looking for is set to grow by a thousand. And from my limited understanding, quite frankly, the technologies to deliver on that demand aren't in place yet. So there's going to need to be a lot of innovation, a lot of ingenuity. And I think this is where the tech sector will be at its greatest in meeting that demand. But technology aside, I think one of the greater challenges are the economics that are going to fuel that innovation. And that's an issue that hasn't been addressed for over a decade. And quite frankly, it's the, the question of who pays. And so this is where, when you look at the overall ecosystem, that there is an asymmetry in the way that value is distributed. And this is a chronic issue that's been going on. And so when we look at all the class of new apps that are coming out, quite frankly, the economics don't close to build out this large, growing um, infrastructure that needs to be in place. So what do we do? Where do we look for? What are some of the answers? And so what we found out is that if you start to look at big data, and if you start to look around the individual as a center of locus, 
that begins to start to create an opportunity space where you could create value, where you could, and this is once again a very broad statement, but there are literally trillions of dollars that potentially could be created by leveraging personal data and in one particular context around m-commerce. So the work that we've been doing is looking at all of the data that's out there by and about and inferred about individuals and how can greater leverage be created around that. Uh, what we've been doing is looking at um, a model in a sense where there's greater trust, there's greater transparency and greater control that's built around the individual. And from that, you can start to unlock a whole variety of different models. Um, another way of saying it is if we stop looking at individuals as consumers, but also producers, well, then we have a whole new set of economic relationships that we can build around and uh, create a, a great point of leverage. So with that, we can uh, start the panel and uh, look forward to the Fantastic. discussion. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Bill.